uh, the class just so that those people who are unable to attend can come along and um, listen to it later on. Yeah, um, so if you've got your microphone on, I think there's a couple with microphones on. If you're not intending to chat to me, you might want to pop it on mute. Otherwise, feel free to, to shout out and away we go from there. So those of you that are just joining, if you can change your program name as we have with everybody on the screen, that's twofold so that we can find uh, fellow students who are studying the same sort of thing. And I can also set up the groups a little bit easier so that when we get to that breakout group. So, well, let's get into it without further ado. Um, as I said, welcome to CDEV 2000. And I've got a bit of a, a fairly large agenda to get through today. And the first part is to tell you a little bit about myself. Who am I? Who's your course convener? And who's going to be supporting you in this course? We've got learning outcomes for each week. You'll find those in the Moodle course, but you'll also find them um, in the weekly slides as I um, put those up each week. I'm going to orient you to the course. I'd like to give you a really nice overview of what the course looks like, how the assessments work, um, because if you've had a look inside the Moodle course, you know, there's a bit going on in there in terms of the assessments. I want to give you the roadmap for that and show you how I'm going to support you through that as well. I've got a small icebreaker activity and going to get you to reflect on why you've enrolled in this course and share it in the chat as our first kind of warm up activity. Then I have got a guest speaker today, and this is one of the really great things that's excellent about this course is that we have a lot of guest speakers. So there's a lot of people with expertise across the university and outside the university, and I'm going to bring in some of those people to share some of that expertise with you. Our first guest speaker today is Tom Pike, and he is the head of the careers team at UNSW. He's going to tell us a little bit about the careers model at UNSW and some of the things that can support your career development and how you can improve your skills and experience as we go along. After that, I'm going to get you into your groups and get you started on that first activity for the first assessment. And if you've read ahead, the idea is that we're going to do three in-class group activities that are what I call agile sprint activities. They are, you know, very quick activities. You should be able to do the bulk of the work in class and then maybe tidy up your submission document after class. So they're not meant to be onerous group activities. They're quick, short, sharp kind of a, uh, sprints is what I call them. Um, and they're kind of giving you an exposure to the agile way of thinking and the agile way of designing um, bits of, of material that you will use in the workforce. So it's a very common technique that's used an agile sprint where you get a very short period of time to do an activity and see what you come up with. So that's what we're going to have a go and practice at over the course of the term. Before we kick off, I just want to remind you that there are lots of places of support apart from myself. Feel free to contact me. My course, de my contact details are within the Moodle platform, so you can certainly email me. And I would prefer the email be early and often. Uh, let me know if you're having any trouble with anything, anything's broken. You know, the courses are big. Sometimes links break or headings aren't right. Let me know. We can build collaboratively and and improve it as we go along. But if you're needing help with um, student support, with uni in your life, or with reporting sexual assault and harassment, with educational adjustments, with academic study skills or special considerations, or some mental health support, there's a great deal of information that can help you across the university. And I'm sure you're probably aware of it, but it is worth just reminding you that that is there as well. Um, something else to perhaps keep in mind is that I am running this particular online course on campus. Um, well, obviously from a kind of a lecture theatre in here. And so you're more than welcome to come and join me. So if you are on campus and you're sort of sitting in a, another room somewhere, um, be aware that it's an online class and I'm going to be delivering to the camera, but you're more than welcome to come and hang out with me um, in LG30 in the Morven Brown building. So I will pop that in the chat, um, LG30. Morgan Brown, feel free to come if you want to, or if you're looking for a space to be able to listen to the class, um, you're welcome to come and do that. Okay, so a little bit about me, who am I? <laughs> Who's going to be running your course for the next 10 weeks or so? You are welcome to check me out on LinkedIn. And in fact, I'd really like you to check me out on LinkedIn. Uh, you're welcome to connect with me, to send me a message via LinkedIn or to follow my career. But 
I really like following your career as a career coach and as a career um, expert. I'm really interested in seeing where the UNSW students go. I'm really interested in seeing uh, your journey and just seeing a little bit more about how that kind of contributes um, to the whole educational experience. So for me, my LinkedIn tagline is confidence builder and career coach. And I am a casual academic with UNSW running the CDEV 2000 course. I'm a with a Faculty of Arts and Social Science third year media and portfolio course and I'm also run and facilitate the two Masters of Management programs for the UNSW online courses. Um, I also write and run courses for the Masters of Business Administration in terms of their mini electives and I'm a career coach for Masters of Business Administration students at the moment and their alumni. I've also worked with the Central Careers team and have experience supporting undergraduate, postgraduate and PhD staff. And prior to that was involved in adult education, running lots of workshops for both professional staff at the university and for academic staff at the university. So my career has gone from a really sort of potted journey um, of working in training, development, professional services, uh, running my own part part-time career business and now pivoting into more academic focused work but also still doing my coaching on the side so I'm in absolute flow uh, when I'm doing these career sessions and so I hope to be able to share some of my experiences with you over the next 10 weeks you'll also see on the screen there um, where our first activity today is all about reflection and growth mindset and I practice the growth mindset I absolutely love learning and have started off my academic career with a Bachelor of Arts in old English language and philosophy, which really probably was not that useful in, in gaining a professional uh, job. But I then went on to do a Master's of Applied Science in Library and Information Management, and I never worked a day in a library. So I decided I didn't want to do that either. And then I went on to do a graduate certificate in education and found my home. Absolutely love education. I've got certificate fours in training and education. But my growth mindset is, is that I've decided to do another qualification and I'm studying at the moment I'm doing a graduate certificate in arts and social sciences research and I'm about to submit a thesis to satisfy the requirements of that. So lots of experience in terms of the career coaching and as well as certainly that growth mindset and, and understanding the student experience. So hopefully we'll be able to go on a great journey over the next 10 weeks. So I want to just give you a bit of an orientation to the course now, because I think this is a rare opportunity that you don't really get in some of our other um, learning. It's a rare chance to stop and reflect on your career so far. And you may not think you've had a career so far, but you absolutely have. If you've had part-time work or you've done some volunteering or you did some things at school, you know, you've, you've got a bit of a career that's starting to build up. You've got an amazing pool of resources in this course. Take advantage of it. So use those things like the career coaches, you know, reach out, collaborate with your colleagues in the classroom, um, as well as with me. <clears throat> so all of the work that you do in this class is really preparing to make the most of that transition into the workforce. So it's really, a, I mean, it's a straight translation from you know, being a great team member here to being a great team member out in, in the workplace. So it's a chance to try on that professional identity, you know, try things out. This should be a nice, safe, supportive space for you to be able to do that. We'll focus on a particular topic each week, and you'll see that in the Moodle course, and we'll have videos, guest speakers, personal reflection, all sorts of activities. Uh, model professional behaviours in class, you know, try it on, give it a go. This is where you get to build that confidence up. Um, so if you're, you know, you're not keen on presenting, give it a go, because you can try it here and build those skills up rather than having to have your first go when you're out in the workplace. The artefacts and, and the assessments that you create in this course will support your real career. You're going to create a resume and practice a video interview and do a uh, cover letter. So it's going to give you a real chance to you know, create some artefacts that you can then take away um, and use in the employment sphere. And in fact, there were a few students last semester who used the cover letter and the resume and the information interview, which is your fourth assessment, to be able to create a job and they've got an internship for the end of the year. So I heard reports of quite a few students who were actually able to then use those activities to, um, to apply for the jobs or apply for the internship. 
So today's learning outcomes are really, as I said, to orient you to the course, to give you a bit of an assessment roadmap, to give you an opportunity to, to get to know each other and really start to build that learning community with each other, um, to introduce you to the world of career development and to inspire you. And that's why I've asked Tom to come along today, to really inspire you about what's available um, and what's out there to support your particular career journey and then get you started on that first assessment. I'm going to come back to some of this because uh, da, 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 we're going to come back to it because what I've got is is Tom's joined us now and I think that that is a really nice place to start. And in fact, what I'll do is I'll stop sharing my screen because I'm sure Tom is going to want to do that and I'll find you in my list, Tom, and give you those rights to be able to do that. You're a co-host. You're a co-host now, Tom, so you'll be able to share those screen and, and get yourself set up. But um, so what we'll do is we'll pause our introduction, Tom, and, and I'll, I'll let you, you know, do your introduction and welcome to, because I know Tom's really busy, because being the uh, team lead of the UNSW careers team means that Tom straddles both strategy and operations. So Tom is a, the sort of manager that looks at, well, what is the, the outcomes that we're looking for students at UNSW? What are those employability? skills that we want you to have and you know how does that link to graduate employment outcomes and work in the real world and so Tom's um, you know been leading the team and the strategy to develop what a model looks like to support your career development while you're here as well as redesigning and designing a number of different opportunities for you to be able to you know make the most of work when you graduate here. Tom's got extensive experience at UNSW in education coming from an education background, but I'll let Tom tell you a little bit more about his story as we go along. Um, but Tom's had a really interesting career at UNSW working with Spire teams and then coming across to the career team and now starting to look at that strategy. So Tom, without further ado, I'd like to welcome you to our online CDEF class and um, turn it over to you. Thanks a lot, Adrian. Um, and uh, welcome everyone. It's great to see you all uh, engaged in this online class. Um, one second, I've just had to jump into a, a, a meeting room that um, we, we normally have a, a range of meeting rooms available, but everyone suddenly returned to campus and um, we were double booked. So just positioning a few things. This is all this agile workplace that yeah. we do now. We can work from anywhere, anytime, pick up any technology and away we go. That's it. Thanks. Now, um, so yeah, I'm the lead for UNSW Careers. And uh, what I really want to talk to you today uh, about is what's available for you during your time at UNSW. Um, I guess, firstly, I'm so delighted that you're all in, enrolled in this course. Um, I think it's a wonderful opportunity for you to, um, I guess, use your curriculum to do some amazing self-development um, throughout this course and really position yourself um, and set yourself up for the future. So I work for the careers team, which is part of UNSW employability, which is a central um, service that supports all students at UNSW. We've been working very hard in the background on a, a new strategy, and um, you will become um, more and more aware of it, and it'll be fully rolled out in uh, the, the beginning of next year. Um, but I'll talk to you a little bit about that strategy and where we're, we're going with it, and also then, um, you know, signpost some different opportunities that are available for you during your time at UNSW. So one of the things I wanted to uh, talk about is our campaign line, um, which we've, in creating this strategy, we've um, surveyed a huge number of students, both prospective and current students, and also run focus groups. And we, from this, engaged, a, as part of our strategy, we, we work with a, an external brand consultancy. And a tagline that we've come up with is make work work for you. And I think that that Really, I, I won't um, sort of get you to, to, to put in the chat what this means to you, but I, what we found with the students that we tested on, it had a very different meaning to different people. And that was really, I think, formed out of um, that everyone has their own employability journey and everyone's on their own journey. 
And the research was very vast and we found some amazing, um, I guess, themes that emerge from it, that students really do want to um, graduate and find a role that has meaning and is gonna make impact. And that was really, really reassuring for me. Um, students also wanna go into a role which works alongside their, prefer their personal life. So I think an approach we're really taking now is to develop the personal and professional identity to ensure that you find roles that um, align with your values. And that's something I'll talk about a bit later. So I'll just move my... So UNSW employability, as I mentioned, we're a central um, service and we consist of a number of different teams. So there's a careers team, which is um, what, what are, you all become very familiar with during this course. Uh, I, I lead the careers team and we have some amazing career coaches who provide opportunities for individual coaching sessions, um, not just on, uh, I guess, preparing resumes or job applications, but they can also talk to you about career planning. And also we have some consultations which are available called Design Your Experience, which really help you to identify what's available at UNSW and how that you, you might sort of uh, develop a plan to um, maximize your time at UNSW and building your employability um, so you can understand all the different things that are available at the un university. We also have work integrated learning. Uh, so we administer work integrated learning across the university. And for some of you, um, if your degree allows it, you may be eligible to enroll in CDEV 3000, which is our interdisciplinary will, will course. And that really is a fantastic opportunity to work with students outside of your faculty on real world projects with some amazing partners who we've, um, we've we really developed really strong relationships with. And we have a student development and co-curricular team. So we administer all the UNSW Advantage programs, but we also run a number of professional, um, professional development programs such as UNSW Heroes, or the professional development program for international students and those personal development programs. So we run the leadership program, um, leadership foundations, which is an excellent opportunity to do some work on your identity, your values and your, um, I, I guess, working in collaboratively, collaboratively within teams as well as being the leader you want to be. So they're just some examples of the different programs that fall under our umbrella. So at UNSW, we define employability as a combination of knowledge, skills, experiences, and attributes. And these are things that you will be developing all the time. Uh, so, you know, knowledge both in your curriculum, but also the interdisciplinary knowledge that you, you, you build up. The skills, both te technical and transferable skills. And transferable skills, I'll talk a bit, I might touch on a bit later, but they're so important. Um, in, in, in helping you to navigate the, the, the changing work environment. Your experiences are so crucial. So we really are encouraging our students to develop both in curricular and co-curricular experiences that help you to um, bring, uh, bring out those different um, skills and attributes and further develop them. Um, and those experiences you, you take with you to the next opportunities and really build on them. And your attributes, as I mentioned, we have a real holistic approach to employability and we are really trying to position our programs to build your personal identity, to go alongside your prof professional identity so that when you do find those roles in, in the future, you know, they're the roles that you really wanna do and um, are really meaningful for you. So what we've done is we've, um, developed an employability roadmap, and that consists of three different phases, the discovery phase, a launch phase, and a growth phase. And those phases are a curation of all the different programs that are available at UNSW. And we see those as um, a way to signpost opportunities to students, depending on where they are. We recognize that um, often, you know, whether you're in first year or fourth year, 
you may have similar needs um, in your employability journey. And rather than um, curating programs based on your stage of study, this is really um, where you identify yourself at in, in, in your own employability journey. So the discover phase is really for those students who are unsure of where they're at in their own um, career planning. You may have a vague idea of where you want to go, but you're not really sure. And we have a number of programs that help you to discover how your values, motivations, and interests um, might align with possible um, personal and professional ambitions. So it really is an exploratory phase where you can understand a bit more about what's out there and what kind of roles um, or, or you know, graduate futures um, might be appropriate for you. The launch phase is where you may have identified a, a role or the, the direction you wanna go in. And we've got a lot of opportunities on how you can, um, to support how you can trial those. So whether that's through doing a work integrated learning placement and internship, um, other real world experiences, our launch phase is really there to help position you to secure that graduate role. So we have a number of programs that might help you um, to uh, <clears throat> prepare for interviews or to, um, to, to develop your, your resume and, um, and, and get secure those graduate roles. We really hope that by the end of the launch phase, students have secured their future away, away from UNSW. And then the, the last phase is something that we are very conscious of is supporting our students who may have secured a graduate role into making a successful transition in the work, into the workforce. The feedback we've got from recent graduates and also from employers is that there could be more done to support our students in, in making that transition. And so we really wanna make sure that um, you're all prepared to optimally, op, you know, optimize um, that sort of transition and, and succeed in the workforce. But a, another big part of the, the growth phase is the recognition that um, we're really now set up for lifelong learning. So um, graduates may choose to pivot um, their career or access further professional development. And you know, there's a, a greater emphasis on things like micro-credentials in the future. So we really are trying to um, prepare our, our, our graduates and others to succeed in the workforce, um, no matter what stage they're at. So we have had a lot of discussions and uh, a lot of focus groups in, in um, coming up with this strategy. And we really recognize that no journey is the same and most journeys are not linear. The idea of a roundabout is a way I could probably describe my own journey um, in, in an employability. And it was something that uh, a lot of other people in a focus group really resonated with. We see it that for many of you, you may be, um, you know, ent entering university, um, in your second, first, second year, wherever you're at, and you may not have a clear idea of you, where you want to go. And you might go off and trial different things at different exits of the roundabout. Uh, you may even go into the launch phase and then decide that once you've trialed, um, you know, had a, an experience in internship that this career path is not for you. And then you might require to go back to the discover phase. And then, you know, you may also, once you've graduated, you may be in the grow phase and then uh, have a, a significant career decision where you decide that, you know, the, the path you've chosen is, is not for you. And you might go back on a bit of a journey of discovery. So this is just one interpretation of the roadmap, but it really resonates for me. Um, one second, sorry. Um, in my own journey, I finished high school and I wasn't really sure what I wanted to do. I had the grades to go to university, but chose not to. I did a range of different roles as you know, office work. I did furniture removal. I was the world's worst security guard for a while. Um, and 
quite quickly I realized that I'd made the wrong decision and I'm, I'm from England and I, I, I enrolled in the University of Manchester there um, after a year of, um, of having those experiences in economics and business. And throughout my university, I didn't really do anything proactive to secure any internships or really think, uh, do much self-reflection on, on where I wanted to go. Um, I had a great time at university, but um, certainly looking back, I, I didn't make the most of the opportunities that are available. Um, following leaving university, I, I didn't have a graduate role and I bounced around a bit and it was through a chance conversation. I, I managed to get a role as an accountant and I, I I had about two years um, doing the this sort of certification to become an accountant. And really, I think in that period, understood that it wasn't for me. Um, luckily, the, the firm I was working for were quite flexible. And I was able to get a position where I moved to Hong Kong. Um, we had a, a lot of products that were being um, uh, sort so, of we were sourcing from China and, and sending across Europe. And I, I had an amazing experience in, in China um, doing that and other business development roles. However, even in doing that, I realized that the work probably wasn't where I wanted to, to stay in long term. And I was coaching soccer at the time, uh, on, just to kids on Saturdays and realized that that was the thing that I enjoyed more than my job. And working with young people was what energized me. So I actually then retrained as a high school teacher. Um, and that led me to coming to Australia where, um, again, I, I was um, doing a bit of casual teaching and managed to get a a short-term contract at UNSW in the School of Education 11 years ago, over 11 years ago. And um, that was really, I think, um, making the most of an opportunity that arose and, and having those conversations. And that further led me to, yeah, in, in, in my 11 years at UNSW, I've had a huge range of roles. So I, I've been... Um, as well as working in education, I've um, done uh, operations roles. A, a big part of my time at UNSW has been spent in working with what was what's the Gateway program, previously the Aspire program, in, in supporting students from uh, low socioeconomic backgrounds and uh, regional rural backgrounds access higher education. And that really has been something that I recognize has align with my values and interests. And I think that, you know, all of the, the, the work of that, um, I, I, if I'd done some more thinking and reflection early on, I think that I would have um, saved a lot of time in going through uh, different career paths. Having said that, all of the experiences that I've taken from being an accountant, from working in China, sourcing products, have all been so relevant to the roles I'm doing now, even, um, you know, having that confidence in managing large budgets, having the, the, the skills to deal with a variety of stakeholders is all things that the transferable skills and the, the attributes, the resilience that I've built up. Hiya. Right? Hiya. And um, yeah, so I, I think what, what I'm saying is really that you know, that journey is an ongoing journey. And I don't know where I'll be in the next two years, um, whether it's at UNSW or not. But I think the, the concept of employability and, um, you know, no longer are we, you know, most of us having one career. Um, I think it's that lifelong learning. It's that lifelong journey. And I think, I, I just encourage you all to, engage in the, the opportunities that are available here to build those experiences early, to, to get all of those attributes and skills that you can so that you can navigate your world of work and find that, you know, those roles that are really meaningful for you and that are gonna, you know, um, fulfill your own personal ambitions and, and dreams.
So, yeah, what, what I'm saying is if, if you, I think, own your employability journey. So I understand that you've got a, um, you know, in, in the course, you, you, in the first week's readings, there, there's um, a reference and you, you read on the Tom Wilson article about graduate capital model. And what we did as part of our revision of the, the strategy was to um, look at all the programs that we have available and ensure that we have, we have offerings that support students in building all these different, um, these different uh, attributes. So we looked at all the employability programs that run, uh, as well as those that are run, not just centrally, but by, um, by the faculties. And we um, survey in, in the surveys of the students in the focus of the students, we really wanted to see that the programs that were available were there that um, we could, you know, confidently say that if you engage in them, you will build these different capitals. And what we found was that the programs that you have access to really are there to help you build um, yourself in that gradual, graduate capital model. And I think, you know, there's an opportunity at UNSW to engage in a, a range of fantastic things um, that will build you um, holistically to best navigate the, the world of work and make those uh, career transitions. So I won't go into great depth about what's available other than we have started to align our central programs within that discover, launch, grow framework. I think, you know, I, I would imagine that in this class, most of you will, um, well, I hope all of you will be able to identify where you are at in this, uh, in, in this framework, but, um, you know, I, I don't think there's definitely nothing wrong with still being in the discover phase. Um, many of you will be. And I think what we're trying to encourage is you to engage in programs that are appropriate for the different phase so that you can really get the most out of it. Um, so I'll point you to our website shortly. And that has a, an overview of all the programs that are available, but we um, encourage you to you know, look at the programs. Um, you can chat with a career coach and plan when the programs run and, and when you might do it in during the rest of your degree. Um, but also think about what you want to get out of your time at university, what you can take advantage of that's available so that you're prepared to secure those roles that you really want to um, go into when you graduate. graduate, but also make you robust and resilient to succeed in that changing world of work and um, I guess make work work for you if you like. So I've, our, our website is currently in a little bit of development um, because we have, uh, we're migrating to a different uh, platform. What was previously UNSW Connect um, it is, um, is finishing up and, and so we will be sending out communications to students about where to access the different um, portals such as the jobs board um, which will go live on the 20th of September so that's next Tuesday but if you visit employability.unsw.edu.au that's where you'll find all the information that you need to know. We send out regular newsletters from employability. I know that you get inundated with newsletters in your student email, but I would strongly recommend you um, take notice of the employability ones, just because we do have some amazing opportunities for you to attend industry specific um, networking opportunities, for example, um, meet with potential employers, or um, we have sessions where, um, I guess, discovery sessions where you can learn a bit more about the different industries and sectors and the different jobs that are available. Um, we have, um, you know, the, the support for you in um, applying for jobs, in building your resume and, and other things that you're also doing in this course. Um, so I, I just strongly 
um, encourage you to visit our website. I will make sure that these slides are shared and um, that's it from me, unless anyone has any questions or you have any questions for me, Adrian. Oh, well, Tom, I'll, I'll always like to break the ice and ask the first question. Um, and while anybody else might be thinking of one, you can pop it in the chat or ask it after my question. I was interested in what you said about values keeping you at UNSW for so long, that there was, you know, values alignment that obviously fit with your love of education. How important has networking been in terms of securing roles at UNSW? That's a great question. It's been um really really important and i must admit it's not something that comes naturally to me i'm an introvert i i, I um tend to you know in large groups sort of go in the corner um but just the, the, the networking has played a huge part in those informal conversations which have enabled me to get a different role actually the role i'm in currently is really through um the networks i've built and also um I guess, as well as those connections, it's, it's understanding how you can, how your strengths, um, uh, you know, could perhaps transfer into different roles. So I have had a, a range of different roles at UNSW, but they have been quite different. Mm. And I think that sort of self-understanding and knowing the, the, the skills and attributes you've got could fit in a certain role has been really important. So networking and, and that um, understanding of strengths and transferable skills has been huge. Um, I really do encourage the networking. And again, I wish I um, felt more comfortable in doing it earlier. I don't think I ever feel comfortable, if you like, but I'm, it's something that I, I know is important and um, the value of it is huge. Yeah, and I think you're right that that networking can feel a bit tricky and feel a bit difficult when it's not natural to us. And if we reframe it about, as you say, having interesting conversations with interesting people and finding those mutually, you know, beneficial um, opportunities, I think that's a good way to think about networking as well. Tom, we've got a uh, question from Sarah. Did you ever experience any external pressures for doing a certain job? Sarah, can you tell us more about that? Can you turn your mic on at all? Not quite sure what you mean by external pressures there, Sarah, if you could just clarify a mm. little bit. Even if you just clarify in the chat, that'll be good. Oh, okay, so oh. did you ever, oh, nice. That's, that's a great question. And mm. Um, mm. I think, yeah, I, I think, I, I not necessarily external um, pressures, but I must admit, I. I probably wasn't the best at school and um not I was probably I, I was okay with marks but I um didn't attend much and, and things and I remember calling my dad uh and saying I was going to retrain as a teacher and he he definitely found it um he quite queried that the fact you know I didn't really enjoy turning up to school and and you know whether that was the right thing for me and wasn't really actually certain that that was um something I should go down but um i know it's very common and i know that um external pressures are, are, are you know uh, can be quite overwhelming uh, for um many students and i i think that um you know that's something you could actually talk to with a careers coach and we have other support services available um to, to, to discuss things like that so um if you are experiencing those pressures about your career choice, I, I certainly wouldn't um, keep it to yourself. I think that there's um, you know, a chance to have conf confidential discussions um, with uh, you know, uh, various different services at UNSW. Mm. 
And I'd just add on to that, Tom, I think that this course gives the language of having those conversations because sometimes that external pressure comes from family and friends who you know, just want to see us do the best that we can do, but aren't necessarily what's going on, you know, aware of what's going on in our mind in terms of what we're thinking. So this course really gives you the opportunity to reflect on what's important to you, your values, what you know, the skills and things that you want to use. But then how do you say that to other people? So not just how do you say to a potential new boss this is what yeah. I'm interested in Tom's positioned himself by saying you know these are the sorts of strengths that I have um, you know if you're able to talk in that language to other people and say you know I want to be an exercise physiologist for example because you know and I've thought about it and this is who I want to work for and you can sort of articulate that often that's where some of those external pressures start to reduce a bit because the, the external people who want you to do the best in in your life will say oh, okay you've got this in in control you know where you're going so I think certainly this course and a career coach will give you that language but it's a great question mm. well tom we're going to move on we've got an assessment roadmap and an assessment to, to to kick off and do but i just want to say thank you and if i can get um anybody to say thank you in the chat as well that'd be lovely because you've just positioned it really nicely i think inspired us again in terms of you know reigniting opportunities on campus to network there were so many activities down there in the quadrangle today you know the societies there's all sorts of things that you can get involved with and so i think it's really nice just to hear you know how you start out in your job and that we don't necessarily walk into that dream role straight away so it's just nice to hear you know those stories as they go along so i'm going to capture some of these comments in the chat and send them through to you later on but thank you very much for your time to, today and i know you're really busy because you've probably got another meeting to go to yeah it's it's quite a busy time at the moment but it's uh, this mm. is this is what i enjoy this is mm. why I, I do the role it's it's working with the students and that's um you know one of the things i make sure i still get the chance to do um because it aligns with my motivations and what i want to do so yeah thank you everyone and i really i hope you i'm sure you'll enjoy the course and, and get a, get as much out of it as you can cheers awesome thanks so much yeah. tom hang around or go whatever you need to I, do yeah, okay. all good Thank we'll you. run yeah. out the door and away. Excellent. Oh, well, how good is that? It's just amazing, I think, to hear um, people's experience because I think that that's often where we pick up the gems about career development. It's often where we pick up the good news that there isn't necessarily a right or wrong way to do things and that there's multiple ways of uh, crafting your career. So let me just bring up my screen again. I'm just going to bring up my participant list, as I said, driving a few things here. Um, there's a couple of people that have joined us, Christy, Denny um, and Sam. I wonder if I can get you to just do the same thing that everybody else here has done and to change the name of your degree, just to pop that at the start. So Christy, Denny, Jesus and Samuel, if you could pop your name there, that'd be great. And then I'll be able to pop you into the right uh, breakout group. So that was Tom. Let me now go back quite a few slides because it's always good to, to get Tom positioning. So I think just hearing that story is really inspirational that we you know, can take a sort of potted way of getting there, but we end up where we need to be. And I'll share you my career story as we go along over the weeks as well. I want to share the structure of our course because it's aligned to both the recruitment process as well as the careers sort of discover, launch and grow phase so that you'll be able to clearly see each of the activities and phases that we go through. So week one, as you see, and these slides have been uploaded to Moodle, so they're available now if you wanted to have a look at them. Um, we're doing a little bit around career theory, and I love starting with a bit of career theory because it allows us to see, oh, okay, there's lots of different ways of um, managing your own career. The next weeks, two, three, and four, are all about exploring your options. So exploring career options, networking, and how do I have a conversation with somebody who's interested in doing a career that I'd like to do and find out a little bit more about that? And how do I discover about what an employer is looking for? Um, and in week four, we're going to get you to put the recruiter hat on and pretend almost that you're a manager so that you can start to get a feel and think about your applications from the, from the other side of the desk. 
weeks five, six, seven, eight are all about the recruitment process where you get to practice a cover letter and a resume, some interviews. <clears throat> and that professional positioning is exactly what Tom was talking about um, in his speech, it was very much a case of being able to know what strengths you've got, what flow you know, you're in when you, you're doing your best work, what impact you want to have in the world and being able to articulate that to somebody so that you can find the right opportunity. And then I love what Tom said about, you know, that transition to the workplace. So really it's about week nine and week 10. Week nine is an opportunity to really try out a lot of skills you're using in this course and then make a plan to transition to the workforce and start to really think about that professional role and how you can walk in the door and hit the ground running and make that great impression from day one. So to achieve that, we've got a whole lot of classes and formal activities, and we've got some career coaching sessions as well. So I highly recommend that you book into those career coaching sessions, because it's just an amazing resource that you've got while you're in this class. And of course, you've got the career coaching sessions outside of this class that you can tap into as well. Uh, course delivery, as you know, is a bit blended. We've got some things on Moodle Online, we've got some seminars, and we've got some teams, and I'll tell you more about that in a little while. This um, is just to explain the assessment, because as you've probably seen, there's quite a few little bits and pieces of the assessment, but it's a chance to reflect on your career goals. So that's why in, in assessment four, we ask you to articulate your career goals. And then assessment four is also a chance to go and network and talk to somebody and find out a little bit more about their roles. The assessment four due dates are towards the end of term because it takes a little while to roll, to organise that conversation. But it's worth thinking about, you know, it really is sort of at the beginning of the recruitment process. Then the next sets of assessment are really going to help you find the role, analyse the role, and go through and practice those uh, requirements. Now you might have a part-time job, you might have a resume, and you might have, have all of those things that you think you need, but really getting you to think about that first role that you have after graduation and how do you position for that professional role. And then finally, our three uh, group activities, which I'll explain in a minute, are all about giving you um, three agile sprint projects that you can use on your resume if you're looking for experience in teamwork, but also an opportunity, as I said, the quick, short, sharp, uh, agile sprints, which is a new way of working in the workplace called design thinking, where we sort of, we put out a minimal viable product, we get some feedback, we iterate again, we get some more feedback and iterate again. So they're meant to give you a bit of a taste test of what those will look like. Uh, now, this again is the assessment roadmap. It's just in a little bit more detail and, and you can have a look at that online. It's in the assessment book lot booklet, but it sort of gives you a little bit more rationale as to why they've been designed in the way that they've been designed. And you can see how they actually align to the uh, assessment roadmap and the recruitment cycle. So our assessment tasks, we've got our three topics and then we've got three individual assessments there as well. Okay, so facilitators. At this course, and again, you're really lucky that we've got such a great pool of people that are going to work with us. Uh, Tom, who we've just met. Next week, we're going to meet Shimani, who's going to tell us a little bit about exploring career options. Catherine, you'll see a couple of times, and Samaya is going to help with our networking and LinkedIn as well. Um, I've got some extra alumni videos, special guest speakers, etc., to supplement our material. And we've got two markets in this course, Petra and myself. So my expectations are for the uh, fairly high, I suppose, for the course. I'm hoping that you use this as an opportunity to, you know, collaborate with your colleagues, your classmates, collaborate with me and build the course together, to be engaged and to contribute where you can, share your expertise, challenge, reflect, provide a different point of view. Um, there's no such thing as a silly question and you know, communicate with me if there are any issues. Communicate early and often if you need to. Um, I am here to support your career journey and your career success. Be curious, have a bias to action and try things out. Our design thinking principles about prototyping and having a go and seeing what happens. Okay, so what 
you'll find that every week we're going to do a little bit of an icebreaker um, because we're about to go into the group activity now. I just want to spend a quick two minutes to just get us all madly typing in the chat. Let me know why you've enrolled in the course. You know, this might be something that somebody would ask you in a networking event. Why did you enrol in your degree? Um, and it might be nice if you can, in one sentence, share with me, and not everybody has to do it, but if we can get a few, that would be great. Share with me in the next one minute why you've enrolled in this course. Oh, nice. Love to learn to develop my science career. Good on you, Liana. That's great. I think you'll like assessment four when you go and have a chat to somebody doing science. Identify gaps in my employability and there's no final exam. Absolutely, the final exam will be you go getting a job, I'd imagine. That'll be the, the an exam in real life there. A uh, friend encouraged me to do it as it teaches a lot in employability. It's great. That's fantastic. So reflect on what you need to learn in terms of employability. Um, and if we're not covering it in, in any place, um, make a note on the forum or email me. Um, I'd like to be able to express my career in the most effective way. Fantastic. I really like that. Bring it together as a brand or, you know, what is your story for your career? More confidence in employability as you transition from the job. And that's the idea here is to, to build up that confidence. So, Bonnie, if there's something that you're not overly confident, have a go. You know, I would absolutely encourage you, if you don't know how to do it, this is the course to have a go at doing it understand which career suits me best well one what you might like to do is have a little look at our week one readings and there is a link to a career test called the RAISEC R-A-I-S-E-C test yeah it's a good place to start and see what careers are suggested in terms of your personality skills to advance your computer science career that's great and Brian I think the information interview assessment four will really help you with that Become aware of what careers align with your strengths. That's excellent because we're exploring options next week. Um, confidence in the recruitment process, nice. And that's exactly what we're going to be having a look at. And that's why the assessments are having a go at that recruitment process so that it's not, you know, when you go for your graduate job, it's not the first time you see that process. You'll have actually seen them and had a go and had some feedback on that. Um, what you can do to advance your current employability trajectory, absolutely right. Think about this as a career planning activity assessment for you'll write some goals as to what it is that you need to do in terms of your learning make, make better choices in regards to employability oh and I love that yeah absolutely Sarah share that with you can with your, your younger sibling share it with your family you know your family have also got plenty of experience in this space and can give you some more ideas as well um, yeah building on your career career skills and exploring the information in information systems assessment one is really good for that sorry assessment four part one is good for that because you'll be exploring some companies that might align to where you you're interested in going. Um, reflect on your skills and that's exactly what we do in the second group assessment. Brianna is we're going to reflect on your generic skills and what you might need to do in terms of enhancing those and understand the different careers for my degree. Yeah and data science I think Norton is absolutely it's such an emerging field um, that I think that the, the information interview will be really important for you to, to find out a little bit more about that and build confidence in the job interview skills and career skills. That's terrific. And that's the, the video interview is going to give you a chance to do that. So thank you, everybody, for, for sharing all of that, because it just also helps me understand where you're at um, and how I can support you. And you know, I don't want to tell you things that you probably already know to do. So that's great. Thank you very much. OK, so we've had guests. Uh, we've had Tom. Now, just want to very, very briefly give you the key to employability which is really about some career development learning, which is what we're doing through this course. It's about gaining some experience and you might have a part-time job or a volunteering job. And if not, this course is gonna give you three group projects that you'll be able to talk about having worked in a team and delivered three reports. You need your degree subject knowledge and your generic skills, along with some emotional intelligence to be able to be confident and have that self-esteem. And reflection and evaluation of your skills is a really important component of that. 
when we think about what are some of the skills and, and already from the chat, this is uh, where you can start to do some self-reflection and, and evaluation about where you think your skills are in relation to graduate employability, because this is what employers are looking for. They want you to be able to communicate effectively, work in a team, be resilient and have emotional intelligence and interpersonal skills. Now, that's what we're actually going to focus on a fair bit in terms of those group assessments. Employers want you to understand the organisation. So the somebody in the chat there about, you know, what are my options in terms of different sorts of organisations to work for or different sorts of roles? Well, this is where the research is going to be really critical because you want to have an understanding of the roles that you're going for in the companies you're applying for. But they also want you to have an understanding and be able to report back to them what you found out and why you're a good fit for that organisation. Um, as well as self-management, planning, initiative and leadership being the other key skills that employers are looking for and you have an opportunity to practice all of those in this course too. So everything has been designed to really build up these skills, reinforce that so that you are building that confidence to be able to work, walk into the workplace. So have a read through of those readings online. I don't expect, as somebody said in there and astutely picked up, there's no exam, but do have a dip into the readings because I think it's useful. It builds confidence. I build my career through a happenstance. Um, a bit like Tom, I network my way into roles and I haven't been for a job interview in more than 15, getting on to 20 years because um, I would rather not. I would rather find the people that I want to work with, pitch myself in terms of the things that I want to do and then find those opportunities to do them. Chaos is about being ready and dealing with change. Constructivism is all about how do you build that self-esteem and that self-confidence to drive your career. Um, and that trait and factor one is the one that I was talking about. Um, go and have a look at the test in there and see what you think. So I want to spend now the next hour and the, the bulk of the time remaining really thinking about reflection because, refle and you know, the word Holly said in the chat there, reflect on your current employability trajectory. So reflection is all about stopping, thinking, you know, about the, the experiences that I've had, what did I learn and what is the gap there or where do I perhaps need to still think about some new places to learn. So there's a lot of different models around reflection and, and you'll have a chance to explore some of those as the first assessment, but you know, it's about being aware that something happened and then sort of thinking about it and then kind of learning from that particular uh, experience. So it might be a case of well, what happened, so what, what does that mean, and then what do I do with that? It might be about an experience and then I observe what happened in that experience and then I sort of think about it, okay, what are the concepts involved and then maybe I need to experiment and slowly improve my skills in another area. It could be a case of, and this is a very particularly popular model of evaluation, the Gibbs evaluation model, it's so something's happened, I had a feeling about it, I evaluated what happened, analyzed perhaps the root cause of why did that happen, come to some conclusions and then develop an action plan. And then you know, something else happens and it's kind of that constant cycle of reflection. So that's a kind of overview of reflection and you're going to go a little bit more into it as we put you into the group. So what I want to do now is just introduce you to that assessment. You'll be working in groups. Now, you might have seen in Moodle that I had set some groups up. I've had to scrap those groups because we had some major changes in our enrolment. So what I've done, and this is why I've asked you to put your degree next to your name today, is that I'm now going to reset those groups based on who's turned up today um, and I'll put you into those breakout rooms um, in a moment. Each breakout room has between three to five people and I've tried to place you all together with your discipline there. You'll be working with these people for the next for the three group assessments and so when I do put you into the breakout room perhaps what you might want to do is obviously introduce yourself if you don't know each other already. Again networking you know this is a really nice part we're going to meet some some new classmates we're going to network with somebody who's studying a similar profession to us and we're going to start to be able to grow our careers together so introduce yourselves then you may want to think about how are you going to communicate so I'm going to give you the bulk of the time in class to complete the discussions for the assessment 
you will have then after class a little bit of tidying up to do in terms of finalising the document and submitting it to Moodle. So you might want to think about how you're going to communicate. Do you set up a WhatsApp group or a, a Teams document or a Google Doc? It's entirely up to you. You all know how to communicate in a modern age. I don't need to see that communication. But um, when you do put your assessment in, you'll notice in the assessment rubric, it talks about a collaboration statement. So that's what you need to do is capture how have you all collaborated? Did you meet on Teams once and then, you know, so-and-so typed up the document and then another person, you know, created the presentation. So one paragraph about pretty much who did what um, and how you came to deliver the final product. So that collaboration statement, you might be starting to realise, is a reflection, is a peer assessment and a reflection on your performance. So by the time you're researching and writing some things around reflection, you're reflecting on the way that you collaborated as a group, that's a double layered reflection and we're really starting to, to get into that practice of reflection. Uh, a couple of tools that I would suggest that you um, pop up there, or just a couple of resources to have a look at would be, I'd Google UNSW reflection. I'm just popping this in the chat. I shared this with the class this morning. You might Google something like growth mindset or reflective practice. I'm just giving you a couple of clues now there. So let me go to the next slide. So you'll notice in the assessment booklet, it's all about, you know, if you can start to repair and do the things you need to do, preparation will help you get through this a bit faster and complete your discussions. Then you'll collaborate in class and kind of, you know, you'll summarise the findings from your brainstorming session. You'll then create a document and you'll submit it to Moodle. Only one member of your group needs to submit. If more members submit, that's perfectly okay. And you will get individual freed feedback uh, from there. Um, Sam, I'll come back to you and um, hang around and, and I'll have a chat to you after that. So that, that's, that's not all going to be fine. We'll work out an alternative if we need to do that. Okay, so where time is moving on, step one. So before class, hopefully what you've done is have a, had a chance to think about how do you reflect. I personally reflect, I've got a written journal, I like to draw things, I use mind maps and I like to take notes that way. I've also started to implement a framework which is situation, kind of so what, critical issue resolution. So it allows me to then identify what the issue is and write down the resolution to that. So hopefully you've had a bit of a think about that. If not, that'd be something that you can do in the next 45 minutes in your group. So in class, you now need to talk about it. So basically, you've turned up today, tick, you get the marks for attending. So there's a bit of a, a secret there in terms of attending. Um, those that haven't attended, we will work out an alternative um, uh, submission for assessment one and feed people into the groups for assessment two. So in the groups here today, you get a mark for participation, and then we really want you just to talk about reflection, just share and brainstorm. How do you do it? Um, you know, how do you actually develop a growth mindset? How do you essentially get ready for that first professional job? Because you're going to need that growth mindset. When you go and talk to a manager for the, the very first time or after your probation, um, you might find that a uh, manager says, how are you going? You know, how do you think you went? And, and where do you think you need to do some more learning? So often that's a, a manager is expecting that you are reflecting on your performance as part of emotional intelligence, a part of those interpersonal skills as well, of starting to realise, you know, the way that you are working in the world. And so after class, what you need to do is then, so, and this is probably what you might want to do in class, is essentially you've got to deliver a product, which is five to 10 tools, processes, systems or activities that you can employ, um, you know, so that you can um, improve your professional skills through reflection. So create that collaboration statement and then you can upload the assessment one. So all I need in terms of, I'm just going to stop my share there now, is all I need for the final product is step three. 
I don't need to have a complete summary of your discussions or, you know, what you were thinking about beforehand. It's really just a matter of step three, you know, what are those tools and, and systems that you're going to use to do that reflective practice? The idea is that you have a, a short, sharp sprint, an agile discussion is really short, sharp, quick, brainstorm the ideas, type up a document, and then get it in and get some feedback from there. So you'll notice in the rubric, it does mention uh, references. So I do highly recommend that you have a look at the rubric. The rubric's pretty clear, I think, about how you can gain some great marks if that's what you're after. Um, and that's fairly easy to do through collaboration and a pretty good document at the end. I have absolutely no desire or to tell you exactly what it needs to look like. You are welcome to present your work in a way that suits your group the best. People in the past have done spreadsheets, they've done a Word document, a table, uh, some students have done a video in some of these assessments if it's appropriate. So it's I'm, I'm really fine if you know you've got a creative group and you want to do something creative, go for it. If you just want to do the straight linear list and give me a collaboration statement, that's perfectly um, fine as well. What else can I tell you about the uh, assessment, I think there's a couple of clues in there about some tools and things to look at. I am now going to just make sure and check that everybody's been assigned. So, Christy, if you can let me know um, if you're able to change it or if let me know in the chat what your degree is, that way I will be able to pop you into the right group. I've got a couple of engineers I'm going to add in here. And I think we that one in there, another one in here. Yes, Christy, yes, you. Just let me know what um, degree you're doing so I can pop you in the right group. That'll be great, thanks. Science and Med. Will the contribution might be decided by the group? Uh, that will be decided by the tutor and the lecturer, yeah. And it will be based on your collaboration statement. So if you look at the rubric, there's an attendance mark that you get as an individual, and then there'll be a contribution mark. So um, if you didn't contribute very much and your group says, you know, so-and-so uh, didn't attend any of the meetings, we'll read, we'll read that and be able to uh, work out a mark from there. Okay. Christy, you're in engineering. Bear with me, I'm just setting up the last of the groups here. Okay, so I think I have now set up all the groups. Um, I've got pretty much everybody there. Just give me one minute here. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I am going to, and Sam, I'm going to pop you into your engineering room um, with your group. So if you're able to participate in the chat, that's great, but I'll pop into your group and let you know. Um, I'll come and see how you're going. You're in group three and I'll have a chat to you then. Okay, any questions before I put us all into the breakout rooms? Okay, so at this stage, I'm going to give you till 3.50 and I'll bring you all back to our main room. There's a lot of um, breakout groups and I will try to come into your groups. If I don't make it into your group, it's just that I've got tied up in another one or I haven't had time to get around to you. But you can ask your question when we come back to the main group or send me a message. And if I can, I will pop in there and we'll see how we go. So introduce yourselves. Have a look at the assessment booklet and the rubric. Start to discuss your reflection, create your Google Doc, and away we go. All right, I'm going to open all the rooms and good luck with your first discussion. Terrific. John or Denny, did you have a question?
All right, Denny, no problem. I imagine you, you might be at work listening in your earpiece and sometimes our students do that if you are. Um, thank you for coming along to class. I'm going to end the class and that'll um, um, drop off your connection there and I'll talk to you next week. Thanks, Denny. Bye.